four hot NFL, you can experience the same thrill of victory as the pros. Plus, your prizes are even better. But first, here's how you play. Answer two questions about this highlight video. And that's it. The rules are easy. Call 1-900-4-HOT-NFL and just answer two right-in-your-face questions about the San Francisco 49er highlight video, and you could win one of hundreds of instant prizes. For example, the Taj Mahal, your very own stealth bomber, or the entire planet Earth along with 900 billion people and their furniture. Not bad, if it were true. But wait till you hear what you can win. Every single day, you could win one of hundreds of instant prizes, like official NFL t-shirts, model not included, NFL footballs, and you could... We're going to do it again! We're going to have to do it again! Slash! 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 Off! Off! It's a draw! 34! Four! Set! Set! As the 1989 NFL season unfolded, 27 teams focused on a single purpose, dethrone the defending world champion San Francisco 49ers and claim that title for themselves. Benny with a moderate drop, throws across the middle, caught! where we win it. Right here is where we find out whether we're champs. By season's end, there was only one champion, and it was still the San Francisco 49ers, the first team to win back-to-back -back Super Bowls in 10 years. From opening day through Super Sunday, San Francisco was the dominant force in football. The 49ers won more games and scored more points than anyone else. Long-standing club and league records were broken with stunning regularity. Their stars are among the greatest players in the game. They led San Francisco to its seventh division crown in nine years. And the 49ers became only the second team ever to win four Super Bowl championships. There are 27 teams in the NFL, and then there are the San Francisco 49ers, a team in a league all its own, the team of the 80s, a team for the ages, masters of the game. moment in a way because was this the final game on the sideline for a great coach Bill Walsh. When Bill Walsh retired following the 49er victory in Super Bowl 23, he exited as a champion and left a foundation in San Francisco on which future champions could be built. Well, we establish an attitude, an atmosphere, a state of mind, an environment that has sustained us through an evolving team. Then above and beyond that, I think our system of football sustained itself and we refined it further and further each year until at some point it might even have been an art form. 
Replacing a coaching legend such as Walsh called for a successor blessed with special talents far beyond knowledge of the game. The 49ers found such a man when they named defensive coordinator George Seifert to continue Walsh's winning legacy. Uh, in my experiences, uh, most dramatically when working with Bill is uh, the understanding and the realization of the importance of winning. Uh, you would always talk about this, but there was always at the same time, the years prior to working with Bill, I'd say, uh, how did you play the game? Did you give it the great effort and so forth? And now the emphasis and the realization of how extremely important the winning really is. Born and raised in San Francisco, George Seifert has always been 49er faithful. While growing up in the Mission District and playing football at Poly High, Seifert got his first exposure to the team he would someday lead to a championship. High school I attended was right across the street from Kizar, and we'd usher football games on Sundays. And, uh, you know, I grew up watching Hugh McElhaney and Joe Perry and Y.E. Tittle and, and I have to say R.C. Owens and Billy Wilson, who now work with our organization. And so now to be the coach of the team uh, gives a particular meaning. Seifert began his coaching career at his alma mater, Utah, then made stops at Iowa, Oregon, Cornell, and Stanford before joining the 49ers. By 1989, Seifert's time had finally come. I hope people don't see it as Bill, still Bill's team. You know, Bill had a lot to do with this, putting the team together, but once he's gone, you know, George has to take control of it and, and uh, get things back rolling and keep it on a roll. I think he's come in and been very straightforward and honest. And uh, he's, he's almost been over backwards uh, in a lot of situations individually with guys to be helpful, uh, to bring himself out, to be accessible. The leader accounts and just to his men. George will not, I'm sure, do what Bill Walsh would have done. But when it comes to working directly with the players and for them to identify him in, in, in difficult, tough situations, it'll be George Seifert and not George Seifert doing what he thinks someone else would have done. San Francisco's new coach unveiled his 1989 master plan on opening day under the Hoosier Dome. And halfback Roger Craig, number 33, spearheaded the attack, rushing for a season high 131 yards. Leading the way was San Francisco's revamped offensive line of Jesse Sapolu, Bruce Colley, Harris Barton, Guy McIntyre, Steve Wallace, Bubba Paris, and Terry Tausch. Craig's two touchdowns put the Niners ahead, and then Joe Montana and Jerry Rice wrapped it up with their first of many scoring spectaculars of 1989. Montana wants to throw. He's got He's to the 40, he's to the 30. Taylor gives him a block. No he's way, down to no. the 10, he's into the end zone. Touchdown 49ers. The victory made George Seifert a winner in his first try as an NFL head coach. But trouble loomed just ahead at Tampa Bay. The Buccaneers nearly handed the Niners an upset defeat, but not before San Francisco's defense dealt out some punishment of its own. It wasn't until the fourth quarter before either team scored a touchdown, but Tampa finally grabbed a 16 to 13 lead with just minutes to play. Unflappable Joe Montana had him right where he wanted, driving the Niners the length of the field for the game-winning score. Ball at the four, first and goal, split backs. On his hip, Montana to the end zone! Touchdown 49ers, he brings it in himself! With just seconds remaining, Montana's magic had prevailed again. But it was merely a prelude to more fourth quarter heroics the following week at Philadelphia. Good afternoon, everybody. This is Joe Starkey at Veterans Stadium in Philadelphia. Is this the team of the 80s against the team of the 90s today? The team of the 80s, the San Francisco 49ers, three Super Bowl champions, and the quarterback of the 80s, Joe Montana. But the Philadelphia Eagles think they are the new rising star in the NFL, and Randall Cunningham may be the next great quarterback in this league. Should be a fascinating afternoon of football between two teams, both 2-0 on the season. 
nice seeing you. Hey, good luck uh, and same congratulations to you. on uh, Thanks a lot. I, I appreciate it. Dot com is always great. You know? Oh, it is. Well, same to you. You've got to be having a good time. I think oh, we all I, do until oh, days yeah. like today might tighten us up. But oh, well, you got to, you know, but they'll, it's going to be a good game. You've got two good teams. you got beautiful weather. What the hell, you know? Let's go, will win this game for us, man. These guys are not better than us. So what? They've been in the Super Bowl. So are the Redskins. It's time to go out and kick some ass. Work Road on turn, three. Yeah. Work on three. One, two, three. Work! Two receivers to the left, including Mike Wilson. Just Rathman in the backfield. Safety blitz. Montana again. back to throw. He wants it all. Rice is out there. He's in the 20. Montana leveled the first blow of the day, but then took a barrage of shots from the Eagles' pass rush. Philadelphia sacked San Francisco's quarterback eight times en route to a 21-10 fourth quarter lead. Come on, David, let's go! But the 49ers' frontline pressure was just as troublesome to Randall Cunningham. With Ramblin' Randall trapped in the passing pocket, the Eagle offense quietly folded its tent while the 49er attack suddenly sprang to light. By now, Philadelphia's defensive weakness had been clearly exposed. Hey, 46, you coming at you, baby! Hey, 46, you coming at you! Don't get scared! Big play, baby! Big play! The Eagles were about to be picked apart by the league's master surgeon. Back to throw Montana. The blitz is here. He gets the ball away, though. It's up the right sideline, and breaking loose, it's going to go all the way. Taylor will go. Taylor's to the 10. He's to the 5. It's a touchdown for the 49ers. The Eagles still led 28 to 17, but Montana's attack was relentless. Eight-man front, Montana to throw. He's got Rathman, he's into the end zone. Touchdown 49ers. With the receivers running wild, Roger Craig stayed in to block all pro Reggie White as the onslaught continued. Montana to throw, goes downfield, he's got Jones! Touchdown 49ers! Three swift blows in the fourth quarter wounded Philadelphia's hopes. And Montana's fourth touchdown pass of the period put the Eagles out of their misery. The first down could bury the Eagles. Montana to throw. He wants the end zone. Rice has got it! Touchdown, oh, 49ers! San Francisco's 5 o'clock lightning struck to the tune of 28 fourth quarter points. And for the third straight week, Seifert's team won impressively on the road. The defending world champions had strongly relayed a message that sent shockwaves through the rest of the NFL. The 49ers finally returned from the road for their first game at Candlestick Park, but divisional rival Los Angeles spoiled the homecoming. The Rams scored just enough points to offset four field goals from San Francisco kicker Mike Kofer, knocking the 49ers from the ranks of the NFL's unbeaten. L.A. won on a last-second kick, but San Francisco would exact a full measure of revenge just a few months later. In the meantime, baseball's World Series forced the next game against the Saints to be switched from the stick to the Superdome, putting the already grouchy Niners in an even nastier frame of mind. The Saints raised San Francisco's blood pressure a bit higher as they jumped to a 17-3 third period lead. But some sleight of hand from Joe Montana helped the 49ers simmer down and ultimately beat up on New Orleans.
A pair of quirky but welcomed touchdowns changed the momentum and frustrated the Saints as the Niners fought back to tie the game. Montana looks downfield, Lawson way downfield, Bryce is there! Jerry Rice struck a blow for victory, and John Taylor's second touchdown catch of the game enabled San Francisco to escape the bayou with a win. The NFL's frequent flyer mileage leaders continued their road show a week later under sunny skies at Texas Stadium. A Dallas defeat would doom the Cowboys to their worst start in team history, and the relentless 49er defense was only too happy to help their foes reach that dubious milestone. Dallas troubles started with San Francisco's pass rush and continued against the 49ers special teams. So here's the field goal try from the 33, make it a 43-yarder by Ruzik. It is blocked. The ball is up in the air. It is taken by Johnny Jackson. It's a foot race. He's to the 30. To the 20, he's to the 10. It is a touchdown for San Francisco. A sore elbow put Joe Montana on the bench, but backup Steve Young kept the Cowboys off balance by relying on the receiving skills of Tom Rathman, number 44. Deadlocked at 14 in the fourth quarter, the Niners finally came alive and took the lead for good. Young fired touchdown passes to tight end Brent Jones, number 84, and a game clincher to Jerry Rice, as San Francisco handed the struggling Cowboys their sixth straight loss of the season. San Francisco's triumphant return home was cut short by the Bay Area earthquake of October 17th. For the first time in NFL history, a game site was changed due to natural disaster. With memories of the tragedy still in their minds, the team showed its professionalism by playing well under difficult circumstances. Number 91, Larry Roberts, keyed a defensive charge that did its job, cutting off every avenue to the visiting New England Patriots. Despite serious injuries to Jeff Fuller, Jim Fonhorst, and Harry Sidney, and a knee sprain to Joe Montana, San Francisco took control of the game by the third quarter. Number 89 rookie tight end Wesley Walls caught his first NFL touchdown pass. And relief ace Steve Young pitched two more scoring tosses to Jerry Rice and John Taylor. First eight weeks of the season, San Francisco had played only one game in its home park. The NFL's kings of the road would have to continue their travels one more time when they met the Jets in the Meadowlands. The visitors brought along their suitcases as well as an abundant supply of sacks. Nine times Jet quarterback Ken O'Brien was dropped by the rush of Fagan, Holt, Roberts, Haley, Kugler, Carter, and Stubbs. Reserve quarterback Steve Bono filled in when needed, throwing his first touchdown pass as a 49er, while lifting San Francisco to its seventh win and seven tries away from Candlestick Park. After a seemingly endless odyssey for San Francisco's road warriors, it was home sweet home at last for the travel-weary Niners, who otherwise looked fresh and frisky to a nationwide Monday night television audience. 
Number 78 defensive end Pierce Holt seemed especially glad to be back with two quarterback sacks to his credit. A healing Joe Montana rejoined the starting lineup after recovering from his knee injury. Joe celebrated his return with three touchdown passes, scores which effectively put the game out of reach for New Orleans before halftime. John Taylor caught one of Joe's scoring strikes while Jerry Rice became the team's all-time leader in touchdown receptions with two scores of his own. Back to throw, Montana drills a pass, went into Rice, he's down to the 15, he's to the 5, touchdown 49ers! San Francisco continued to make short work of its NFC West foes the following week by demolishing the overmatched Atlanta Falcons. In a repetitive combination that devastated opponents but never bored the hometown fans, Montana and Rice led the way to the 49ers' biggest offensive output of the season. Number 30, Keith Henderson, scored his first NFL touchdown, as did perennial All-Pro linebacker Charles Haley, number 94. Pressure by Holt, pressure by Haley, and the ball slips out of his hands. It's picked up by Haley. He goes into the end zone. Touchdown, 49ers! San Francisco appeared to be invincible. Only by self-destruction could this team lose, said the experts. And the Niners had only themselves to blame when they fell to the opportunistic Packers the following Sunday. Four turnovers and ten penalties cost them dearly in defeat. The most painful mistake came on an encroachment call that wiped out this apparent interception turn touchdown by number 31 safety Chet Brooks. Three damaging San Francisco penalties kept one Green Bay touchdown drive afloat. And when Don Mikowski scored on a quarterback draw in the final period, the Packers had won their first game in Candlestick Park since 1963. Although stung by the loss, the 49ers would not experience another defeat for the rest of the year. San Francisco rebounded strongly a week later in a battle between the league's two best teams. A Monday night TV audience watched as the Niners bolted to a 24-7 lead, thanks to the precision-perfect passing of Joe Montana. Montana straight back, drop, a pass across the middle, caught by Jones, touchdown 49ers! Oh, what a catch for the defender, hanging all over him, 17 yards. Leading the defensive charge was number 54, linebacker Matt Millen. A waiver wire pickup in September, Millen's fiery leadership and experience was particularly valuable against the Giants. Bay Area fans were confident as the 49ers widened their lead. But New York stormed back with 17 straight points, the longest score coming from rookie runner Dave Meggett early in the second half. Deadlocked at 24, deep in the final period, the San Francisco defense took control of the game. Seven sacks and five turnovers by Romanowski, Walter, Turner, Pollard, Brooks and company, and the New York's comeback, with veteran cornerback Eric Wright, number 21, delivering the knockout blow. Sims back to throw, trying to stand in the pressure, now steps up, throws, picked off! Eric Wright has it! He's back to the 20, and he's down to the 17-yard line! Eric Wright has the pick of the night! Eventual league scoring champ Mike Kofer booted the game-winning kick as the 49ers survived their toughest test of the season. 
San Francisco ran into some more trouble when they journeyed to Georgia for a rematch with the Falcons. Atlanta took a lead into the third quarter, but it was only a slim one thanks to another strong effort from the 49er defense. While number 42 Ronnie Lott and the rest of the defense stopped the Falcons cold, quarterback Steve Young lit the fuse for a sizzling third period, completing 10 consecutive passes, including the game-winning touchdown to John Taylor. Young ran for another score to clinch the victory, setting the stage for a primetime duel with San Francisco's arch rivals. The stakes were clear. Beat LA and the Niners would clinch the NFC Western crown. But when the inspired Rams exploded to a 27 to 10 lead, a win seemed unlikely until the 49ers and John Taylor staged a record setting storybook rally. Montana to throw, he's got a man all alone, it's Taylor, he's in a foot race, he's down the sidelines to midfield, makes a cut, goes to the 40, he's got a blocker in front of him to the 30, he's to the 20, cuts in again, still has a defender, goes into the end zone! After a pair of key turnovers and a Mike Wilson score, Taylor became the first player in league history to explode for two 90-yard touchdowns in a single game. Joe, a slant into Taylor. Taylor breaks the tackle, cuts across the middle, breaks another to the 30. He's down the sideline, he's to midfield, he's to the 40, he's got a blocker in front of him, he's to the 10, he's to the 5, it's a touchdown, John Taylor! The stirring comeback made San Francisco champions of the West for the seventh time in nine years. And with home field advantage for the playoffs secure, the Niners might have been expected to relax in their last two regular season games. Instead, they tuned up for postseason play with a pair of solid performances. The first coming against eventual AFC Eastern champion, Buffalo. Niner depth was showcased from the running and receiving skills of Keith Henderson to the clutch play of quarterback Steve Young. Young passed to Jerry Rice for one score, then put the Bills away with a rollout touchdown of his own. It was also a record-setting afternoon for all-pro safety Ronnie Lott, who added yet another accomplishment to his impressive resume. Kelly with a shotgun, straight back drop, under pressure, lost it down the left side, it is picked by Ronnie Lott, Lott's back to the 30, he's to the 25, cuts into the middle of the field to the 20, he's down to the 15, he's down to the 10, he's down to the 8, and he's the all-time interception leader for the San Francisco 49ers with 48. A second half rally clinched the victory for San Francisco, and then the 49ers sustained the festive spirit of the holiday season for their fans by thrashing the Bears on Christmas Eve. The 49er defense saved its best effort for last, posting San Francisco's only shutout of the season and its first whitewash since 1987. With increased playing time, reserves Keith DeLong and Tom Homo, number 46, made big plays. While Joe Montana made history, finishing the year with the highest pass rating by any quarterback ever. Terrence Flagler's touchdown run wrapped up San Francisco's glittering 14-2 regular season. Ahead loomed the playoffs, a three-game stretch that would secure the 49ers a fourth Super Bowl title and a permanent place in NFL history. Big money game, big big day, baby. This is what we live for, JT. JT. This is what we live for, baby. Who can I do who? 
Only the strong survive, baby. That's what we're here for. Kick their ass. That's what we got to do today. Payday. Payday. Chance of a lifetime. Let's go. Ready? Yeah. A journey to the Super Bowl. We just gotta go. Oh, 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 Let go! Let's go! Let's go. In the playoffs, the 49ers met the star-studded Minnesota Vikings and torched the NFL's best defense with their deadliest weapon. And he drops back the throw. Goes across the middle. It is complete to Rice. Rice to the 45. He's to the 50. He breaks through. He's down to the 30. He's down. The Vikings hadn't seen anything yet. The NFL sack leaders never laid a glove on Joe Montana, who looked as good heading for a fourth championship as he had going for his first. Montana moved through the vaunted Vikings with surprising ease, burying them in the second quarter with an avalanche of touchdowns. Flips a little bit. Has to roll out to the right. Looking to throw. Can't find anybody. Goes for the end zone. Jones! Touchdown 49ers! Montana with a fake. Carries it himself. Rolling to the right. Throws to the end zone. It's caught for a touchdown. 49ers John Taylor. Montana straight back to throw. Looks over the field. Goes for the end zone. Jerry Rice across the middle. Francisco's offensive barrage overshadowed a big play day by the 49ers defense that totaled four sacks and five takeaways against the bewildered Vikings. Kramer back to throw. On the right side is picked by Ronnie Lott, and he's got a lane. He's to the 40, he's to the 30, he's running hard to the 15, to the 10, he's into the end zone. Ronnie Lott, the interception, touchdown for the 49ers. Number one, number one, 49ers, number one. And off to Roger, right up the middle, into the end zone, touchdown 49ers. Remember, a lot of humility now when we're talking with reporters. Right. We, got, we got another game. That's all we focus on is the next game. We're not talking about anything else, just the next game. Whichever opponent it is, so be it. We got a lot of humility. You guys did a hell of a job out there today. You got to keep it going. To advance to the Super Bowl, the 49ers would have to defeat their oldest and fiercest foes. For the first time in 80 meetings, these two California rivals would play for the championship. We play nickel, we've got four guys that are rookies playing. And not only rookies, guys that haven't played much. You know, they're just playing now. Okay. Right, we we're, gonna set up, communicate. we're gonna set our own standards today. We're not gonna play at that level. We're gonna establish a level of play that is great and we're gonna maintain it throughout this whole game. Let's go, y'all. Let's go. Having already won two playoff games on the road, the Rams began the day unfazed by the hostile candlestick park surroundings. L.A. took a three to nothing lead, then looked to further increase its advantage. Come on, man, we need seven right now. Yeah. Right the hell now. Everett puts it on his hip, throws for the long one. Making what Ram head coach John Robinson called the biggest play of the game, safety Ronnie Lott saved a sure touchdown. From that moment on, the Rams' racehorse offense spit out its bit and came to a screeching halt.
Montana steps back. Throws for the end. A breakdown in communication by L.A.'s secondary gave San Francisco an easy score, which set off a chain reaction of big plays by the 49ers. In a matter of minutes, L.A. was reduced to nothing but sacrificial lambs. Everett straight back, throws up the middle, behind L.A. San Francisco's 14-3 second quarter lead was a testament to the balance and precision of the offense. But what puts this team at a level far above all others is the talent that emerges when time is running out and the end zone is 90 yards away. Montana looks around, can't find anybody, now goes to the right sideline. He got it to Jerry Rice, a great catch. He's every defensive coordinator's nightmare because it seems the less time he has, the better Montana gets. With each tick of the clock, more observers are coming to the conclusion that Joe Montana may be the finest quarterback to ever play the game. If the Rams try to come after Montana, because he's got to get it to the end zone. Although the fans were already set to board the next flight to New Orleans, the 49ers still had 30 more minutes of unfinished business. Remember, no standing around, no buying a ticket. Three and out, baby. Three and out. The ferocious play of the Niners' defensive front brought the L.A. attack to a virtual standstill. And then the equally punishing San Francisco ground game finished the Rams for good. <laughs> in complete control and the way they're playing on the field I tell you they're just pounding just pounding the Rams down yeah they own this ball game right now because yeah. the Rams are just almost competing physically it seems through cavernous holes that grew wider as L.A. grew weaker, Roger Craig and Tom Rathman refused to go down until they had run the Rams out of town and out of time. And the celebrating begins. The San Francisco 49ers are going to their second consecutive Super Bowl. New Orleans, we coming, baby! Come on. Go The Super Bowl-bound 49ers made their win official with a victory shower for their coach. And George Seifert's championship baptism was all but complete. The 49ers had overcome injury, complacency, and history to win the NFC Championship. Now the team of the 80s set its sights on the first Super Bowl of the 90s.
about, we talked about that meet at the end of the tunnel, baby. We got to the meet now. Let's go eat it. Yeah. Let's go eat it. Yeah. Let's go eat it. Yeah. Remember our motto. The race is not to the swift, out of battle to the strong, but he that endureth to the end. Yeah. All the glory be to God. All right, baby. Go on, heaven. オレンジのユニフォームがデンバーブロンコスオレンジクラス強力なディフェンスを持ちましてこのスーパーボールまで駒を進めましたサンフランシスコ 49ers こちらの方はやはりエースクォーターバックジョー・モンタナですモンタナからライスエスクジョン・エルウェイプメネソンエキープアラビクワーエスキナリズチネセセーポルフェンエオヴィアメンテトゥトルペーゾディクエストバスラディフェザネルフェマレジョー・モンタナダンマーク、ハイエネスーパーボール、ローネ、ルイシアナスーパードーム、イニューオーレン。Montana rolls to the right. He's got two men in the formation out there. Can't find him. Comes back across the middle. Complete the right into the end zone. In Super Bowl 24, San Francisco proved themselves masters of the game right from the start. At the heart of the 49ers' domination was a flawless game plan. A steady rhythm of plays drummed out against an overmatched opponent. Leading 13 3 early in the second quarter, the Niners unleashed Tom Rathman, who sustained the beat all the way to the end zone. With 40 seconds left in the half, the game's deadliest passer hit the game's most lethal receiver. 30 minutes separated San Francisco from its greatest victory and Denver from its darkest defeat. And the Denver Broncos are going to be a very depressed group when they go to the locker room now. They won't even like the Scooby halftime show. Let's go, baby. Keep the pressure on. Keep the pressure on. Keep the pressure on, HB. In the final 30 minutes, the 49ers completed the biggest land grab since the Louisiana Purchase. They left their footprints on every square inch of the Superdome, gained a stranglehold on the word excellence. And by game's end, the team of the 80s had stamped their imprint on pro football history. Montana drops back to throw, looks over the field, goes for the end zone, Jerry Wright! Begin its celebration earlier than anticipated. Post pattern down the middle, and Montana spotting those safeties wide again. Got it to it. Joe Montana ripped apart a Bronco defense that had permitted the fewest points in the NFL this season, and in the process, shredded every meaningful passing record in Super Bowl history. With the greatest of ease, the 49ers turned the NFL's biggest game into the Big Easy. The 
the underrated 49er defense created four turnovers and battered by this Red Army, the orange was crushed. Montana is still in the game at quarterback. Hand off to Craig, sweeps to the outside. He's into the end zone. Touchdown, 49ers. And haven't we said that a few times today? The boy is going to party tonight. Hey. Woo! Woo! Well, what you're seeing here now is what people are going to call the best team that's ever played. Victorious 49ers were not playing against the Broncos, but rather the Packers of the 60s and the Steelers of the 70s, staking their claim as the best team ever, the undisputed masters of the game. The San Francisco 49ers keep their date with the history books. In one of the greatest football games ever played by one team, they become the first team in the history of the National Football League to win back-to-back -back Super Bowls since the Pittsburgh Steelers. What a pleasure it is to bring in yeah, the new one more set of, of the National Football League, Paul Tagliabue, to award the oh, Mitchell Party Trophy. Paul, oh. Brent, nice to be here on a special day. Eddie, thanks. I know you're wet, but uh, let me just say this. Today, the 49ers finished their trip to becoming one of the elite teams in the history of the National Football League. You've won your second straight Super Bowl game. The team did it in dominating fashion as you've done in the playoffs, as you did it throughout the season. You've won your fourth Super Bowl in a decade, even less than a decade, You're tying the Steelers as the only team in the history of the league to win four Super Bowls. And you are clearly, at this time, the 49ers of the team of the decade, and they're starting the 90s looking like the team of the 90s. Yeah, I want to congratulate you. I want to congratulate all the players, Coach Seifert, and your entire staff. Congratulations. Yeah.